On Remembrance Sunday, let's not forget the part the British countryside played in the wars of the century. It was dotted with hundreds of hastily built camps and airfields. Some of them are still there to this day, often derelict, but echoing with memories. And a few weeks ago, Countryfile tracked down a handful of people who'd served at just one of those bases from the Second World War, and we invited them back. This was once the RAF fighter station of Hutton Cranswick in East Yorkshire. These days, it's a pig farm. 2,000 of them live in what's left of the old barracks buildings. Tony Pexton, who runs it these days, was just a toddler when the family farm went to war. Today, only birds fly overhead, but there are many who remember the days when the sky was full of spitfires. We still get people coming to see the place that they were stationed at during the war, having a look round, older people have retired, doing their memory lane bit. And some of those stories are very touching, very personal ones. The planes may now have flown into history, but the buildings are still there as a poignant reminder to a whole generation of what life was like when they were young and fighting for their country. A few weekends ago, some of those people returned to Hutton Cranswick. They bring back memories? Oh, very much, uh, yes. Oh, dear, dear, dear. So what was this? This looks to be in pretty good condition yeah, yeah. over here. Oh, what was yeah. this? Yeah. What was this building? Evolution. That's the evolution. I well I remember <laughs> that. <laughs> well, the lavatories, yeah. the showers and the saloons. Yeah. 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 I wonder if they still work. Well, they never work, they never work <laughs> Not very well. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Among the happy memories here are those of John Sibley. He was serving as a corporal when he fell in love with Anne, who was also stationed at Hutton Cranswick. We were going to be posted. The mm -hmm. squadron was going to be moved. Yes. And uh, we were out walking one evening, and I th was thinking to myself, I must do something about this girl. And uh, it was a freezing cold wind, yeah, and we sheltered by this st a straw stack, something like this. Yeah. And I said, will you marry me? And she, and, <laughs> and she laughed, just like she's doing now. And I said, well. <laughs> I said yes. Yeah, you said yes. <laughs> and that's 53 years ago. Thousands of pilots and air crew passed through this base, including the men of 316 Spitfire Squadron from Poland. They happened to have a couple of butchers amongst them, and with not too many questions asked, 316 had bacon for breakfast. Ah, that was kept very well, and always every morning and every so and so was lovely divided, and we enjoyed every bit of it. Thanks to the farmers, the local farmers, absolutely marvellous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this must have been the guardhouse, wasn't it? Well, it certainly looks like it, yes. yes. And, and if you remember that if you came in here drunk, you had to be very quiet going by the guardroom, yeah. but you couldn't come in uproariously drunk and Disbehaving yourself. So. Otherwise, you get locked up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did that ever happen? <laughs> Not to me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon this was? Yeah. Yeah. It's a pantry. Pantry? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. The three concrete runways of Hutton Cranswick have long since returned to fields, but for the veterans coming back now, this place is a powerful reminder of the days when they had wings. This is where the main runway used to be, isn't it, Jim? And in October 1943, you were involved in a great drama, round right about here, I think. I think so. What yeah. exactly happened? Well, we were bomb disposal squad, and we were called here after an air raid to make it safe. How big uh, was it? It's about 250 kilos. Enormous. Yes, enormous. yes. And it took us about two days to locate and make it safe, and then the airfield was in operation again.
Well, now I've got a, a bit of a surprise for you all because uh, as a special tribute to you and to everybody else who served at Hutton Cranswick during the Second World War, the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight have arranged something rather special for you. So any moment now, you should be hearing some old and very familiar sounds, I think. Probably for the last time ever, a Spitfire and a Lancaster bomber fly in salute over Hutton Cranswick. Sound of, of the Merlin, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's oh, beautiful, it's isn't it? Yeah. It's so, so crystal clear. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to be up there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I should never, never forget that. In fact, Lancaster, it was just fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, like it really was. Yeah. Yeah. I'm absolutely yeah. speechless. I really am because it was so <sighs> like that. <laughs> But we had an extra surprise in store for one of the veterans. Tony Makovsky, holder of Poland's highest combat award, stayed on in Britain after the war, joined the RAF and raised a family. After the fly passed, we reunited him with an old friend. And of course, the, uh, this Spitfire is, is still okay. flying, you know, uh, Tony. It's still operational, yes. this, this plane. Yes. And I'd like to introduce you now to the lady who flies it. Colin oh. Grace, who's the only woman Spitfire Hello. pilot in the world. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah. you know, I'm all boiling inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, Tony's just said that you know the noise of the Merlin engine is a noise he'll never ever forget. Mm. Well, I think the, the sound of the Merlin engine is always really well known from the outside, isn't it? But uh, how it would is. you like to hear one again from the inside and come flying with me? I very much so. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to do it. Very that, much so. Very, very much so. So, for the first time since the war ended, Tony Makovsky was aloft in one of his beloved Spitfires at the age of 77. Gorgeous. Safely home again, a Spitfire and one of the men who flew them from Hutton Cranswick. Legends Thank both. <laughs> My first Polish squadron pilot. Beautiful. <laughs> did you, did you let him fly quite a bit then? Yes, I did. And uh, he said, do it. can I do a turn? And I said, go for it. And so we... <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Country File returns to the normal time of 11.30.